Hello everybody, welcome back. I'm Matt, thanks for stopping by. Now I got a really fun pattern for you today and it came about from a comment in the last pattern we tied, which was the grubby girt. Pete asked, I wonder if this fly has anything to do with an old mainstreamer he knew of called the gravel girdy. Well, I'd never heard of the gravel girdy. Wasn't in any of my books and I read a lot of fly tying books, but I did see a couple of pictures of it online. And when I saw it, I thought, oh my gosh, we've got to tie this thing. So this one immediately shot up to the top of my to-do list. So a little history on the pattern was created by a guy named Bill Covey of Farmington, Maine. Most likely sometime in the 1960s, maybe a little bit earlier than that, but the story on how the fly got its name was he was at his bench, tied it up, and his wife walked by and said, that fly looks like Gravel Gertie's legs. So who was Gravel Gertie? Well, I had no idea. I had to look that up too. But it turns out she was a character in the old Dick Tracy comic books who wore black and white stockings. Now, apparently she was a villain and not a very attractive looking character, but she does have a fly pattern named after her now. Now, it is not a hard pattern to tie. There is one technique in this one that I'd never done before. It's when you're wrapping two colors of a chenille for a striped body. Lots of folks will just wrap them up as a spiral, but in this one, you kind of do an over and under and switch them around over and under to create, you know, distinct color bands. Now, it's not a hard technique, but I did mess it up a little bit, you'll see in this tie, but overall, the fly came out okay. And really no exotic materials. Do have some white and pink calf tail. If you don't have pink calf tail, just use some kind of pink wool. I think the original actually called for pink wool. And then fox squirrel for a, a topping over the top of the white calf tail wing. <laughs> but it's really a fun and cool looking pattern. So thank you, Pete, for bringing it to my attention. I think y'all are gonna like this thing. Let's give it a shot. So there it is in the vise, a gravel girdy. What you're looking at is my first ever attempt at tying this thing. And you're about to see the second. Now this is a size eight, but it is a seven X long streamer hook. And let's pinch that barb in right here. And this is an offset hook. Just so happens to be what I have. A lot of folks like those. See, it's got that little twist on it right there. But I'm gonna use some black thread. Just put a little base down right up front here. Not far back yet, because I'm gonna catch in my little bit of an underbody up here to start which I'm gonna use this orange wool yarn. It's really the tag for the tail, but by doing this right here, you do build up a little bit of an underbody and keep from getting a lump here in the back. So let's just go ahead and wrap this to the back. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim this off. We'll fluff it out in just a minute. So cut it maybe, I guess if you air to any side, air to making it a little bit longer because you can always trim it shorter. But I think that might be about right. So I'm going to take my brush here and then just try to fluff this out. And it's easier to do it now before you get a lot of other materials tied on. Okay, so the next thing we're going to tie in is two pieces of chenille. This is just a medium. I'm going with a black and white. Well, because that's what the pattern calls for. But I'm gonna catch it in, catch the black on the bottom. I suppose it doesn't matter, but I think it is gonna work best with one of them on the bottom and one of them on the top. Okay, now this is a technique that a lot of folks probably don't know or just don't use. You could certainly just take these side by side and wrap them up, but you might not get you know, perfect uh, bands. So one way you can do it is just pull the bottom one forward. Now just take a wrap up over it. Nope, go the other way. So yeah, let's go toward me and then back up over and now watch this I will bring this one swap places bring the white one and then do it again so this takes a little bit of dexterity here now I've got a black and a white band I'm going to swap them again bring the black one up forward and actually <laughs> gotta remember I don't want to be alternating 
wraps here. Uh, so just, yeah, bring <laughs> this. I might need to alternate wraps, one of them under and then the next one over. Okay, so we'll do that. Yeah, now I've got them all going under. That takes a little bit of thinking. Okay, now we're where we want to go. So just under and then over for every other band. It's hard to explain it, but you can probably, you'll figure out what I'm talking about as you try it. And this one goes back under. And then just swap them with every other band. Okay, that took a little while and it certainly wasn't perfect, but I think we're gonna be fine. So let's go ahead and cut these off. We've got a little bit of a wing. Well, first we've got a throat before we get to the wing. Okay, that was just a few extra wraps to try to band that front, keep it from getting a little crazy on me. Now our throat, just a small tuft of pink calf tail. If you don't have pink calf tail, I'd go with something else pink. If you got some pink hackle, maybe some marabou, just any kind of feather, you could probably even use some wool and, and tease it out. But the pattern I saw did call for calf tail, and I happen to have it, so that's what I'm gonna put on. Just try to catch it in right on the bottom. Now for the wing, we've got two components on it. And the first one is just a little bit of white calf tail and it's not a real bushy wing as far as I can tell. I am gonna put a little wax on here. Cause this stuff is slippery and you know, I'm not trying to stack this and I don't want it too long, at least to the bend of the hook, but not really past that tail there. So let's just do a pinch wrap right here. Got quite a bit of wax on my thread, probably a little bit more than I wanted. But I'm gonna put several wraps, and do I wanna put one under it to keep it from spinning? Yeah, probably. I don't think it's a bad idea. But I don't really wanna prop it up. So I got that one under it, now I'm gonna go back with just a couple right there. Okay, I think we're gonna be fine. Now let's snip this off and then we'll put our topping on. And our topping is just a pretty small little sliver of fox squirrel, fox squirrel tail. So let's put a little wax on here because again, this is pretty slippery too. I'm just gonna catch it in, get my length about the same as the white. Let's see, that's gonna work right there. Now let's just pinch wrap it in. A couple of tight ones. Is that coming off the top? Yeah, I think it is. I think we're in fine shape right here. So I'm gonna do a couple of tight wraps right here. Not going too far forward because I don't want to, you know, cause me to have a bunch of extra hair up here when I snip this and have to do my head. So we've got a couple of rogue fibers right there. Let me take a second to try and trim them. Okay, I'm not sure that did any good, but let's just build our head. Take our thread right back behind the eye and then ramp it back up and build as big a head as you want. You know, whatever you think is typical for your streamers. Now that hook was slipping down on me but we're fine. Let's go ahead and do a whip finish here and then see if we have any cleanup. Okay, we might want to fluff this out a little bit. Got a couple of crazies right here. Uh, critiquing this, yeah, it wasn't perfect with that banded body and that first black band is a little bit thicker. I don't know how I managed that, but somehow I did. But overall, this is certainly a fishable fly drop of head cement and this thing's going in my box so i appreciate you watching everybody y'all take care and we'll see you next time